Hi everybody, thanks for watching Access Hockey MI. We are continuing our draft talk, um, mostly because the draft is coming and we all need to be prepared for what happens. Um, we're going to talk about who we would like to pick sixth overall. Of course, we don't Everybody's know the future. Been asking us. No one knows the yeah. All of our friends, all of our fans, they just all want to know who we want. Yeah, just you guys. Yeah. That's okay though. Um, so we would really like to pick William Eklund overall for the first pick our, our selection yes yes that she's got it <laughs> so we're going to talk about him today um kind of what we see as his future and kind mm -hmm. of what we like about him um the problem with us doing this is that i get attached to who i want to get picked and then like she just said uh, we don't get them and then it's really sad and it just spirals out of control and we eat too much popcorn and it just it's great it gets depressing so we really want william eklund so we're going to talk about him and let's go it'll be no surprise it's another swede we're a little partial to Swedes. It's so true. Is, so is Iserman, it seems like. <laughs> but five foot ten, one seventy six at his last weight in roughly. So a little bit on the smaller side. Room to grow. He's a kid. We've been yeah. over this. Yeah. So 2020, 2021 was a bit of a hot mess. And he jumped around from the U18s to U19s over in the SHL and ended up getting promoted to full-time SHL. So that's with the men, the full grown, that's the big huge. boys. Yeah. And he's, you know younger than 19 so mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive in and of itself he played 40 games total with them got 23 points he was averaging 15 minutes or more a night so that in and of itself is again pretty impressive because he's so young and yeah. being able to keep up with that kind of pace and in that his kind of first structure year with yeah. the shl Yep, big. exactly. And he's currently said to be among the best scorers of the among the U19s in the SHL as a whole. So in, you know, popular company like Lucas Raymond, as well as his teammate and line mate in many situations, Alexander Holtz, who was drafted last year by the New Jersey Devils. So he's in good company and showing a lot of promise already. Yeah, we love it when they're playing with other guys who have already been drafted because it's just like in the AHL mm -hmm. when you see um, them be able to play with veterans who can teach them all that they know right. um, and just help them increase in their skills and abilities. So overall ranking for NHL Central Scouting, they have him at fifth. And then, of course, uh, Bob McKenzie in TSN has him at seventh. So depending on where you look. Right in the middle. Different. Yeah. It could happen. It's a, it's something that could Stranger happen. Stranger things have happened. We're looking forward to it. And like Rachel said, he is on the smaller side. But we also have to remember he is, he's young. Mm -hmm. And he's going to need development. And that's kind of when, when you kind of see where you're going, you can start developing for that. And that's, right. I think, when they start Getting serious about their nutrition, getting serious a about more solid direction. Yeah, and then they get more people in their corner with mm -hmm. an actual team to get them. This to where kid they need to could go. end up being six foot two, two ten. Probably <laughs> not. But <laughs> that would be cool. But some of the pros that we want, we're going to talk in tandem with the pros and cons. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a, he's good at this. He could work on this, yeah. that kind of way. So um, he's really good with skating east to west on the ice not the best north to south so by that we mean he needs help in the um the say it for me <laughs> what the team no 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 the um what acceleration I, yeah haha -ha. there we go she's got it the acceleration so the kickoff what right when you get going to get the speed mm -hmm. he's really agile so going east to west on the ice he's good in the zone he's really good he's good at um, getting the puck away from guys. He's good at keeping the puck, puck protection. So he's good within the zone, behind the net, pretty much anywhere that you've got there. Mm -hmm. But he does need the help um, north to south, and I think right. that that's something that once he gets that down, his skating is going to be pretty well oh, rounded. Yeah. yeah, and the acceleration, a lot of that comes to, he is on the smaller side right now, so he does not have that leg strength, that stride strength yet. But compensating with his east to west movement is really promising, considering he shows an understanding of his body. He can kind of manipulate it to get to where he's got to go. He will get that acceleration eventually, but right now it's just not as strong as suit. Yeah. Second thing, his passing and stick handling. Um, we'll talk about those two in tandem. He seems to be a very sharp passer. Very uh, he, quick. Too. Yeah, he's good with the deception aspect of it too. So a lot of times, you know, you'll see guys deking and they'll look straight at the goaltender, make a pass to their right. And it kind of, it's those little things that people do and players do that will accelerate their game because it will increase those opportunities. They're able to deceive at the same time as communicating with their teammate. So it's really impressive that he can do that right now. And, but on the flip side of things, he does need to get more accurate, and along with the size, which will come, we always say that, mm -hmm. he does need to get a little bit more accurate, perhaps with his passing and his shooting, but he is capable right now to open up those lanes and create those passing opportunities to get a lot of primary assists. Right, and I was really struck because um, if you see the videos, um, they do have a lot of videos on YouTube of mm -hmm. like a compilation. They do this more in the draft area just so everyone can see kind of who's 
in the top, and I know that the scouts get a lot more access to those things yes. than us lowly folk do. Maybe um, we'll be in Sweden this next uh, Maybe season. that would be sweet. Anyone want to pay for it? But one thing that I noticed um, immediately was how quickly he made decisions. So he's a huge playmaker in yeah. that he does not hesitate with the puck at all, which is something like a hockey fan can usually notice on like a power play or penalty kill, something like that where it's like, okay, shoot, okay, shoot. He's very like, got the puck, get it somewhere else. But it's not dumb. They're not stupid decisions. So it looked like he was able to get, and I think that that in tandem with a con could be a con. If Mm -hmm. once you get to like the higher, more elite levels. There's a lot more sticks in your way. Yeah, you got it. And I'm sure that that's something that he thinks about anyways. It's just something that if you're too quick to pass, too Mm -hmm. quick to shoot, you might lose it. But then again, if you don't, try you don't know Mm -hmm. so that's something with him is very quick decision making and I think that that's something that can be built on and can be approved on and it's good to have it's good to start there right um and like Rachel said his shot isn't the most accurate thing you'll see but he can he can find the spot when he needs to and there's plenty of gorgeous things that he's done on these (laughs) on the highlight reels that we've watched that are like holy cow, good job. (laughs) (laughs) Well done. So um, those are some things with the passing and Mm -hmm. stick handling that we've noticed uh, with him so far. And this is keeping in mind, and I know it's kind of like beating a dead horse. SHL, wider ice. That's how that works. It's 85 feet instead of 60. So there is a lot more passing, but that will work in his favor, I think, because he's getting a lot more practice than what he would right now in the North American League. So having that ability to kind of read those plays, he will have to kind of speed up his thinking a little bit, but the quick decision-making will help with that. Yeah, that he already has. Exactly. Yeah. And hopefully make that transition a lot smoother mm-hmm. if and when he gets drafted. Or mm-hmm. We'll if see if it affects him. Right. You know, we it, it's always interesting to see. And they usually say... Some it does, some it doesn't. And they'll usually play it off like, well, yeah, you know, it's just something to get used to. Which is true. They're yeah. professionals. It's just something they have to get used to and right. that they will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and another thing happen. we noticed, too, and this is really exciting and I think it probably has a lot to do with his youth, but hopefully it stays consistent, <laughs> is his high energy. Yes. He, uh, Janae assimilated him to Joe Valeno. And mm-hmm. how Valeno, he, he kind of has, he has a steadiness about him. He plays with the same energy shift after shift after shift. Doesn't seem to really taper or wane too much. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Eklund. It looks like, you know, he consistently throughout his whole shift will have the same amount of push, same amount of energy. I'd like yeah. to see him in a long situation, right. like a long PK or something, you know, mm-hmm. where he can't get that change. See what his stamina yeah. looks like. He'd probably like, more be on a power play than a PK, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, that's But true. in the same event, I Even mean, so in a special team situation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really cool to see that the just the the tenacity is really nice. It's yeah. not it, it's gritty, but it's with energy. It's not like I'm. Just I would gonna... say he's spunky. Yeah, he's yeah. very. You can tell in his skating, and that just might be because he loves hockey, which is great. But, I sure hope so because um, he wants to do it for the rest of his life. Yeah, so. and you're gonna get drafted, <laughs> sir. So hopefully you love it. Um, but yeah, the high energy is something that I like to see because mm-hmm. it does it creates the mood on the ice. It makes right. the other guys around you play to your level, play to your spunk. If they're being lazy on a puck, it's not mm-hmm. going to be helpful because you're going to get your the high energy works into your skill as well. Right. So I think that's something that is going to only help him going. Well, forward. and it will push you if there's other players. Yeah. If you have kind of that disposition, we've talked about other prospects that are this way too. If there's another player on your line that is pushing harder. You have to have the energy, the motivation, and the drive to push as hard, if yeah. not harder, than them and kind of play off each other. Mm-hmm. And with that, and, there, and all the reports we were reading, too, is that he has a really high hockey IQ. So you mm-hmm. pair that with the energy, it's going to be really cool to see just how it he, develops. Yeah, who he gets paired with and how that really challenges him. The Another thing, you know, the, the two-way progression, the two-way style of game has been, you know, obviously the last couple seasons has been a very primary role of how players are developing yeah. and how they're training. With him, over his course of the SHL last season, he averaged 42% in the defensive zone, roughly, Mm -hmm. and 39% in the offensive zone. Now, being a left winger, obviously, offensive is kind of where his niche is. But it's nice to see that he's spending a good amount of time in the D zone, Mm -hmm. working out that game, and really learning how to read the puck from both ends. It just gives a much more clarity, I think. Um, to the understanding of the game and the opportunities he can create for himself. I think it's a pretty good chance that we get him six overall. Um, of course, we never know who's going to be left. So I know when we drafted Philip Zadina, mm-hmm. um, Iserman was shocked we got him. The next yeah. pick we got was Joe Valeno. He was shocked he was still there. So if there's Cider, a guy, we were shocked he was still yeah, there. if there's a guy who's been waiting in the wings and we're like, oh my goodness, he wasn't taken. Yeah, I could see that. But I feel like if it goes in order of how it usually does. Yeah. But then again, as Rachel pointed out, with this draft, it doesn't seem like there's a star-studded first rounder. Right. So Owen Power is great. Mm-hmm. We've seen him in the USHL. He's going to be a great teammate for or a great guy on any team, really. But it doesn't seem like there's as much hype around it's this not draft. not a landslide. It, yeah, it doesn't yeah. seem like it's a given. So really, 
I think that this draft is going to be really exciting to yeah. see where everybody ends up just because it's not a landslide and it's not like, oh, right. Lafreniere's going to... He has yeah. like 500 points in 20 games. <laughs> so <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, so I think Didn't that it's going to be... And Eklund being um, in Europe right now for development and being able to develop with the SHL. We're crazy mm-hmm. about the European leagues. Yeah. They do a great job, class especially the SHL. They just mm-hmm. do a great job with development. So he's in good hands right now. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that that's going to be a good thing going forward yeah. for him. And the wings, and I know it's it's been a, especially this last week. I've noticed too that it's amped up talking about you know what kind of player we need right. and all that kind of stuff. Really, what it comes down to is we need we everything like everything. we said last week. <laughs> but what Eklund looks like he could be is a scorer, and yeah. that's one thing that the wings, you know, they're developing really well in a lot of areas. They're showing some really good promise. Scoring is not one of those areas yet. Right. And I say yet because we have a ton of prospects coming through, and we'll touch on that later after the draft. But mm-hmm. we have a lot of guys coming through that could potentially fill those slots. But, you know, three, four, five years down the line, we still want to make sure we have those players. And, and who knows how many other teams Batman wants, you know? Exactly. So who's going to be have 40 <laughs> teams by the time we Expansion actually Expansion drafts just cup. keep on coming. Money, money, money. And that's another thing to see. Yeah. Um, we're... Curious to see who's going to come forward in the expansion draft, who's going to be mm-hmm. protected, who's going to be the one to let go. As you know, Thomas Nosek was the last one that we had lost um, to the Vegas Knights, who are in the running for the Stanley Cup still. Oh. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> how, how do they do that? Like <laughs> they had, they, they they're George doing well. the GM over there. Can he give, give us a hand? <laughs> well, Steve's got Steve's it. great. And we like got, an assistant. Yeah, an assistant <laughs> to the general manager. We do need an assistant coach. George, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have a good gig over there. Yeah, right. Um, so, like we said before, we're really excited about Eklund. I really hope that we get him. Uh, let us know in the comments who you would like to get six overall. There's again, this is all just based on what we think we're looking for mm-hmm. as a team, uh, what we think we're looking for based on what we see in the prospects. It's coming conjecture. Up. Yeah, and it's conjecture. And then these standings are going to switch all up until the day of, just because mm-hmm. it just does that. Um, so let us know in the comments who you are looking forward to seeing, and even if we don't draft them, who you're most excited about in the draft. That mm-hmm. would be great. Because you should watch them. And then let us know what you think about the NHL finding coaches for speaking against officials. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't um, know what I, I... I do know what I feel about. I'd I don't find like a it. lot if I were in the NHL. I don't like it. because All of us would. Because <laughs> even if they say, like, oh, they're great referees, I just don't agree with their call, they get fined. And yeah. I just don't understand. <laughs> maybe, maybe that ref was a little sad because he was, like, broke or something. But it's the NHL that finds them. Yeah, it's not true. like the refs get together and they're like, let's find him. Next <laughs> video, we're going to talk about the fallacies and finding people through the NHLPA. It's super weird, you know? So let us discussion. know what you think about that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about... Bruce Cassidy, yep. who is the coach of the Boston Bruins, was fined $25,000 for saying he didn't yep. like the calls of a game. He's different than Butch Cassidy. <laughs> Butch Cassidy <laughs> Who am I is always the coach state for <laughs> Bruce Cassidy. <laughs> wild, wild west. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. So let us know what you think um, about Eklund and about the drafts that you see coming forward. And we'd love to hear all the comments that mm-hmm. you have to say. Um, so let us know in the comments what's going on. And, and hi to Brent Anderson's daughters. Hi. Shout out to fellow Andersons. Thank you for all the love. Yep. It's yep. great. Anderson's got to stick together. That's true. And get Swedes <laughs> on the team. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.